At 0324 hours on December 17, 2020, a sedan slid off an icy Route 1 in Smyrna, Delaware, traveled down an embankment, and came to a rest in thick vegetation. Citizens Hose Company Engine 44-4 and American Legion Ambulance 64 responded. Engine 4 assumed an angled blocking position across the incident lane and the right shoulder. The ambulance and a police cruiser parked downstream. Fire police deployed advance warning one-eighth of a mile upstream. This is what happened next. When I stepped out of the vehicle, it, it was just a, a sheet of ice. And uh, I knew then that we were in a pretty serious situation. The patient had self-extricated himself and was being treated by EMS on the embankment. So basically the vehicle was abandoned now and our only responsibility was safety in that vehicle. It was entangled in some wooded debris. So I advised the officer of the engine to have the crew uh, grab a saw and go down and remove uh, the debris from around the vehicle. So I went around at the back of the truck and one of the other firefighters was on the top and uh, he was handing me down the chainsaw. So I took the chainsaw and we, we both went down to the hill. I saw a vehicle coming at a high rate of speed in my lane, which was already blocked off. Still kept coming towards me and at the last instant, I guess they realized what was going on. They swerved their vehicle, barely missing me. I just fell to the ground to get out of the way so I wasn't hit. I then saw the vehicle strike the side median bridge twice. And then the next thing I know, I saw it spinning and barreling towards the engine. I'm watching my crew start to advance down the embankment to the vehicle. And the fire policeman, uh, who I had staged several hundred yards back on the other side of the bridge, uh, keyed up that someone just narrowly missed him. I screamed as loud as I could into the radio to them to look out that this vehicle was going to hit. And about the same time he said that is when uh, the back of the engine was hit. And at the bottom of the hill, as soon as we got there, we heard this horrific bang. And uh, the other firefighter looked at me, he goes, I think engine four was just in an accident. I got up and was thankful that one, I wasn't hit because it was so close. I thought I just saw my life disappear in front of me. Then my next thing was when I looked over there, I'm thinking, there was firemen standing right there, and I knew Chief Robinson is usually standing right there to put that light tower up. My stomach just dropped. I, I knew it was bad just from the impact, and the engine literally moved uh, almost a foot, eight, eight inches, eight, 12 inches. And uh, I knew at the time that I had gave the order to have scene lighting put in place, which would have required my driver to be out of the vehicle and to be almost, if not in the place where the vehicle had struck the back of the engine. I really was hesitant to step around the corner because I didn't want to see what I thought I was going to see. I couldn't even talk. Uh, I stumbled and uh, tried to get myself together to make the call uh, for additional resources to assist us. And uh, all I kept thinking about was my driver. At the same time that I was working on extrication, I had not personally seen Robbie. And I started yelling. I said, has anybody seen Robbie? Where's Robbie at? Is he okay? Because of where the car was positioned, Robbie should have been standing there. I usually would get out of the truck, put up the light tower, and um, give the light to the guys. But it, it wasn't that bad, so I just turned on the scene lights and decided since it was so windy and so icy and so cold, I just stayed right in the truck with my seatbelt shoulder harness still on. The SUV that hit the truck uh, actually jarred me in the front seat. And then I just kind of said to myself, we've been hit. And that's when I stepped out of the truck and I saw the car that, that had hit us. As soon as I saw him, uh, the amount of relief that went through me, uh, I grabbed him like he was my daughter and just, and just hugged him. It brought back memories from when I was in a uh, fire truck accident before and um, uh, I really, I mean, I had palpitations, you know, I, I had to go sit down because I felt dizzy and lightheaded and it really, really hit home. After it all ended, I went home and talked to my fiance and told her what happened about all this. And I didn't sleep for, <laughs> I guess maybe a day and a half because my adrenaline was still up. I was still worried about everything. My world just came crashing down that uh, an officer's worst fear just happened to me. And that is uh, losing a member. That is uh, what was going through my head 
And um, until I saw Chief Robinson coming around the backside, uh, my focus was solely on finding him. I was, I don't know, a shock. Um, just, I guess, to the point because it scared me. What made the difference here was doing the proper traffic blocking procedures and roadway management. Uh, if what we had already had in place, if we would not have had that, we would have had fatalities. But blocking the way we blocked and doing it the right way kept the rest of the crew safe because they were on the other side of the truck. Responding apparatus, they have their operating procedures of what your first engine, second engine, and any additional resources where they're gonna take up blocking or stage. We took our training seriously. We positioned the truck textbook like it was supposed to be placed. Uh, we had a senior driver behind the seat who made a command decision not to get out of the truck that night and put up the light tower. He made a decision to stay in the truck and buckled up. We had all of our apparatus on, all of our apparatus lights on. We had our safety vest on. We had our fire police down the highway trying to give early uh, warning to the accident scene. So everything that we did, I think, probably created our fortune that no one was hurt. Always be proactive to do what, you, what is right, what you've been told, to have the proper resources. And if you don't have them already started, then to start them. You can always turn resources around. You can cancel individuals. Don't be reactive and wait for something like this to happen and then take measures. After the accident, we, had a, we did a critique and we had the uh, critical incident stress team come and talk to the guys that were there and the rest of the fire company because it was their brothers and sisters who were there on that scene. Uh, that helped to just get everything out. Everybody experiences near misses and it's what do we do with those near misses that ha that we can improve ourselves and there's a lot of opportunities up here for you to discuss near misses and learning processes. We have company meetings, we have training events and then we also just sit back here on the tailboard of the fire truck and talk about stories and stuff and that's how a lot of the information is communicated. It was a really good meeting and uh, debriefing of our incident and helped us work through some things um, and to, to carry on operation. And that's where we're really able to process out some of our feelings and our thought process. And part of that is we, had to, we were able to talk about what we thought could be an immediate improvement um, to the area uh, of safety and, and traffic awareness. Visibility is definitely uh, number one. And through the uh, responders network, we've uh, found out as far as lighting, proper lighting procedures, reflective vests, uh, also advance warning with our fire policemen. Uh, we purchased a traffic control unit uh, since this incident to even give more light uh, advance warning to let folks know with road signage, with cones, with uh, this vehicle is just outfitted with all kinds of, of traffic management. As a driver operator, you're able to take a stand back, take a look around, really size things up, and, and also being a senior member as well, you're able to provide that feedback to the leadership and make recommendations or things that might make the situation a little bit safer. We have also put our fire policemen through a flagger school. So they are now certified flaggers. You want qualified individuals that can handle traffic incidents and manage them efficiently, safely, and effectively. Now we've also added traffic management resources from the Department of Transportation for all of our incidents. So not only do I have fire policemen come in, but also I have vehicles from the Department of Transportation to assist us with traffic management through the state. It's made us really think and, and pay attention, slow down, and look for the safety part of it before you look for anything else it's very quick for something terrible to happen. And you may think that you're very fast, but you're not gonna outrun an accident. By the time you realize that something was bad is gonna happen, it's too late. The driving public uh, really doesn't pay attention. They want to get where they want to get and they don't care if you're in the way. So you, you have to pay attention to your surroundings and take care. Safety ultimately is everyone's responsibility. You do this training advance warning, the blocking, traffic control, 
it all hits home when stuff like this happens. Every department out there watching this needs to take safety, situational awareness, apparatus placement seriously. It was the best feeling in the world to, to see his face come around the, the back end of the engine that day. And I hope I never experience that again. And this is the reason why I'm doing this today because I don't wanna see a department experience what we did. Get the proper training, go to the responders network, take the classes, push it through your department, pay attention to it because if you don't pay attention to it, it will bite you. You can have that mentality that it will never happen here, but believe me, we never thought that our vehicle would be hit. You need the safety measures in place. And if you don't have them in place, then you're looking for something to happen. And it will, it will, it's just a matter of when. We often hear about lessons learned from incidents where a responder was struck or killed. But we can also learn from incidents like this one, where the outcome could have been much worse if traffic control and safety measures had not been in place. Conduct an after action review for every response. There's always something we can learn and do better next time. For free training on the recommended responder safety and traffic control practices highlighted in this case, like advanced warning, blocking, and setting up a traffic incident management area, visit rsln.org.